everyone. Welcome back to Jed's podcast. Well, it's obviously great to be back after a few weeks. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This episode will be the final one for our 2020. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you all. But stay tuned for this episode as I've got a very special guest. Unfortunately, he was delisted at the end of this 2020 AFL season. He played for the Western Bulldogs. Welcome to the podcast, Fergus. Great to have you on, mate. Cheers, Jed. Really keen to get into it, mate. That's uh, yeah, very exciting. We've been, uh, been in the works for a couple of weeks now, so keen to get sorted. Same here, mate. I look forward to obviously chatting to you uh, out through the podcast show. So we'll, you, mate. Very keen to get started. Yeah, definitely. So I'll start off with the first question, mate. Um, where did you play your junior footy at? Yeah, so I was at um. So obviously I went to Saint Teresa's. Um, so obviously just played with the affiliate team there, and then uh, Keynes and Sanders was my my main junior one. Um, they were had a, had a not a direct correlation with Sanders at that time. I think they're just called Sanders now, but um. That was sort of just where I went, um, you know, obviously playing for Santa, you know, before I got picked up, um, you know, as a family club. So it was a real no-brainer for me. I don't think my parents would let me go anywhere else. So, yeah, that was where I sort of just did all my all my stuff. And, um, you know, I managed to play, you know, some footy with, with blokes who I played a lot with growing up and then into senior footy, which is great. Um, you know, you get to build those friendships early on. So that was, um, that was a really enjoyable thing for me as I, I sort of started to develop as a footballer. Yeah, so you're just saying then, obviously, mate, you played for St. Teresa's, which is in the Bendigo Junior Footy League. Then you obviously played in the Bendigo uh, Footy League before you got drafted. How long did you actually play at Theranos, mate, before you went across to the Pioneers? So I um, I played two years of under-18s. Um, and in my second year of under-18s, I managed to scrap in a couple of senior games and then I broke my foot. Um, so I ended up missing about nine months with that and then played a final year at Sanders where I was sort of in between a couple of clubs. So I played with Sanders for the first half of the year and then um, I actually wasn't on the Pioneers list to start. So they ended up calling me up about halfway through the year and said, look, there's a spot available if you'd like to come and have a run around. Um, so it's sort of a funny old year. So it was 2016. Um, so I ended up playing, I think, you know, five or six senior games at Sanders and then played most of the rest of the year at um at the Pioneers, but then managed to sneak back to finals and sort of managed to, to, to sneak into a twos flag there with um with my brother and a few good friends there. So it was a weird year twenty sixteen. Um but yeah, so that was my, my third year at Cena. Um that was my final year um for the time being, yeah. Fantastic mate. Santos uh obviously a great uh footing club in the Benio League of us that they, they've been very uh, successful over the years, obviously being in the Bendigo League. Yeah, so they're a great club. Obviously, yeah, so obviously, as you said, then you went to the Bendigo uh, Pioneers squad, mate. Uh, what was it like there? Obviously, it would have been much different to Sanders with all different routines and that. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, when you when you do play at your local club, um, being Santos, it is more of a club feel. You know, there there is one goal, and that is to you know essentially be successful, as you said, and, and try and win you know premierships. Um, whereas when you do get to the pioneers, there's still that aspect of wanting to win, but then there's also the aspect of you know players want to move on to that next level and and get picked up. So um, I think that's probably where you know that balance has um, has to be found at, at that NAB league level um, where. You know, you, you try and build that successful reputation, but you also, you know, you want to get players into the highest level. So it is that fine line. And um, I think players, because you do think, you know, when you are playing, oh, there's someone watching me, that, you know, you can get, you know, um, really internalise your thoughts and, and think a lot about your own performance. Um, so it was a really weird experience going in, because as I said, I went in halfway through. Um, and so I had to learn pretty much all the boys a couple I played junior footy with um, pretty quickly. Um, but I was lucky in an aspect. I think Joey Atley was the captain at that stage. Um, he went to Port, uh, but he was a really great, great fella. Really welcomed me a lot early on. Um, so it was, it was a struggle early on, but, um, 
yeah, I really, you know, felt felt at home really quickly, and they were they were terrific in sort of welcoming me in. That's uh, fantastic, like you were just saying then, Fergus. Obviously, mate, you felt uh, welcome and obviously at home at, at a different different footy club, mate. Early on in in your age, obviously, like you were just saying before, it's different to obviously you know being at Sandhurst at that country level. It's a lot more competitive. Obviously, that obviously your teams like your pioneers and that they are pretty much your next level to get the opportunity to potentially be drafted. Obviously, you got drafted to the AFL. You obviously would have had to have worked uh, very hard, mate, um, at Pioneers level. Yeah, look, um, you do. And you sort of, you know, you hope, you know, there is there is an element where, you know, there are blokes who have really strong natural ability. Um, from a young age, I probably didn't develop um, as quick as other people were. So I had to put in, you know, a bit more work with my fitness and, you know, um, my skills were at, you know, a certain level where, you know, because I wasn't, you know, in under 16s, I was quite a lot, I was a lot shorter than everyone else. I was, you know, pretty light. And if I did get the opportunity to, to get the pill, that I could use it well and, and things like that. So I, and then I managed to get have a bit of a growth spurt, you know, come my first age under 18. So I was lucky in that aspect that um, I really struggled a lot as a junior. So I had to do the extra work. And so, from then that became a lot of my mentality sort of as I, as I worked my way up the ranks that, you know, I always had to do more to sort of to be at the same level. Um, so, it, you know, it was tough, um, but at the same time, you know, it's, uh, it, it's what comes with, you know, trying to be successful at, at the next level, at any level you play at, is, you know, you have to work harder than the next like to, to try and be successful. Um, so that's just sort of, you know, it, it's where it all sort of came to for me. Um, obviously, over the, this year, you know, getting delisted was really disappointing. But at the same time, um, through my career, I still felt like I had those principles in place where I did do everything I could, you know, to be a successful football. And, you know, walking out of the game, um, you know, it can be disappointing being moved on. But when you know you've given it your best best opportunity, you can sort of work, walk out and be pretty happy with what you achieve. Yeah, that, that's right, Ferg. Obviously, you're just saying then, it definitely would have been, mate, really disappointing for you to be, unfortunately, delisted by the dogs at the end of uh, that, this AFL season that's just gone. Uh, and it obviously would have been a tough year, I imagine, for you players, obviously, living in hubs and quarantine and spending a lot of time away from Victoria. Yeah, mate, it was a really different year. It is, uh, it's an interesting one to talk about. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, we'll look back at this whole year as, as quite a difficult part of that experience. It's something that you sort of um, think is quite interesting. Um, and, you know, even talking to a few people who, who've asked me what the hub was like, you know, we had we had different things. We had FIFA tournaments going on. Uh, you know, we couldn't leave our hotel for the first two weeks. If you crossed a boundary line, you broke in quarantine. So it was a... It was a really different sort of experience. It was it was really tough by the end, um, and you know um, I think every player had their own challenges up there. Um, but yeah, definitely one I look back on and sort of you know laugh at years to come with sort of the experiences I got to have up there. Yeah, that's right, mate. Like like obviously some some clubs said it was obviously good for their for their club, especially with. The younger clubs, you know, I suppose like in Cartons and St Kilda's at the moment, and them guys, obviously, they got fairly younger list, and even the Bulldogs have got pretty reasonably young list still. Obviously, they said that they obviously thought it was good for players to obviously build uh, relationships and also bond together, but it obviously would have been such a long time to be away from from your families and obviously not being able to who come back home because you had to stay in hubs in all all different states there were at the time. Yeah, yeah, and definitely, and you know, you really feel for, you know, you think about the blokes in their first year, like that's their first experience of AFL footy is that you know they have to move up to Queensland away from their families. And I know on my first year I relied really heavily. I went back to Bendigo a lot um, to see my family. You know on you know, if I could get back on a Saturday or a Sunday. And to think, you know, those folks didn't get that for, you know, up to, oh, you know, 12 weeks, 13 weeks. Um, you know, it is a big job for them. Um, 
So you do sort of look look at those blokes and go, you know, I've got to do whatever I can to help them get through because you can only imagine if you're going through something where you're struggling and not seeing, you know, your partner or, or your friends or that, you can, it's probably multiple by 10 by what these, you know, young fellas are going through. So there is that challenge. But even talking to a few blokes from, from different clubs up there who, who, you know, didn't have a successful time in the hub, they still said, you know, what they learned from it, you know, is, is such a big thing for their, their development. Um, and, you know, you look at North Melbourne who, I don't know if they had a win in the hub, but at the same time, you know, Flynn Perez managed to, you know, to break into that side and the things that he would have learned from that will just take him in such a good, hold him in good stead for years to come. Um, so I think, you know, there were the challenges of the hub, but there's still so many positives come out of it too. That's right, Ferg. There obviously would have been a lot of challenges for you, but the uh, community, I know they were very grateful for for all the sacrifices you players and staff and the AFL made to continue the season, especially when Victoria had them tough, them tough couple lockdowns. I'm sure that it, it would have gave and you know, because a lot of people love their footy. So I'm sure it would have given them something to look forward to watching on the weekend. So you, you guys sacrificed a lot and I'm sure a lot of people are grateful for what you for what you guys done as players. Oh, thanks, mate. And, and we, you know, um, you know, to say it was tough in the hub, um, we obviously knew what was happening back in Victoria. I live with my brother and his girlfriend and, and they were stuck in Melbourne. And so, you know, talking to him, he was keeping me updated with things that were happening. And so, you know, we were given, you know, a bit of a luxury to get out of Victoria to keep the season going. And, um, you know, we're, we're really grateful that we were able to get that opportunity, but we understand all the struggles that, you know, people back in Victoria had to go through. Um, but, you know, you hear, you know, I was speaking to my family a bit and they were sort of saying, oh, it's great that the footy's still on because it's something to watch. Um, so we were really pleased that we could, you know, continue to get a season out because we knew that it was something that, you know, provided a bit of entertainment for, for people at home. Um, but, yeah, as, as we said before, it's just been such a tough year for everyone for so many different reasons. But it was great that we could, we could push out a season. As tough as it was, we managed to get one out. And, you know, it looks like, fingers crossed, that, you know, we've, we've, we've got through the other side as, you know, a whole country and, you know, we can sort of start to move forward and hopefully get back to some normality. That's right, mate. It definitely has been a tough year, but things are looking great in Victoria, but also in every other state across Australia at the moment. Going back to earlier uh, in your uh, AFL uh, football career, mate, at the Western Bulldogs, uh, the night you were drafted, I'm sure there would have been a lot of emotions from uh, family and friends and obviously a really exciting time for you. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so it was a, it was a, it was a very interesting night. So I'd sort of spoken to a few clubs leading into draft night. Um, I think maybe seven in the end, but none of them really in a heap of depth. Um, none of them left me with any confidence that, you know, something might happen. Uh, so it was a Friday night because I actually trained at CNS that night, just had a run around um, and then watched the draft. We just had dinner. I didn't invite anyone around um, just because, you know, there was such a high chance of not getting picked up that I didn't want to, you know, give anyone that impression that it's a possibility. Um, so we watched, um, you know, it got through to this, you know, 50s, 60s. And I thought this is, you know, I'm roughly, if I'm going to get picked up, it'll be around here. Um, and they got to the, you know, the late 60s and I'd spoken to Fremantle, Geelong and, and Dogs and they were all sort of in that sort of bracket. Um, so, yeah, pick 70 came and I think I actually said, oh, I think, you know, I could be a sniff around this area. And I think my old man um, made a pretty snarky comment back at me just to sort of keep me pretty grounded. Um, something he does well, he always keeps me, keeps me pretty grounded. And uh, so we actually were having, you know, a, a heated conversation when my name got called out. So I missed my name getting called out. It wasn't until my brother reacted um, that I actually worked out that I'd gone. Um, and it was just, uh, yeah, I was just overwhelmed with emotion. It was just a really weird one. I, I felt so numb um, about what had just happened. Um, but I was also so excited. You know, my phone started pinging, going off. And um, one of my best mates, Will Brown, he lives about seven minutes away from me. And from the moment I got drafted to the moment he arrived at my house, I think it was about three minutes. So I'm terrified about what speed he was going at to get to my house that quickly. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a really great night. I, I spent, 
spent it with my family and friends. It was unfortunate my mates were going to school. So we were all booked to go to schoolies the next day. So they couldn't come out for a drink with us, which is, you know, disappointing because I had a flight at about 7 a.m. So I missed out on catching up with them for a drink. They came to the pub just to say good day. So that was great. But um, yeah, look, it was it was one of, you know, my favourite moments was, was that night and, and getting to experience that. And it's something I'll always look back on and, and think of really fondly. I am glad. I am glad, mate. You obviously really got to enjoy your night with your family and obviously a, a couple of friends later on, like you said. So obviously, once you once you knew, mate, you were at at the dogs. You were you were drafted. Your name was called out. Obviously, after that, what can you uh, explain to everyone what happens? Because I'm sure things move fairly quickly after the draft. Yeah, so it's a pretty quick turnaround. So obviously the draft was a Friday. So I spent the next couple of days just catching up with a few few people, just um, sort of doing that. But then pretty much the rest of the time was just packing um, to start training on the Monday. So it was a pretty three days to sort of get your stuff sorted and then, um, yeah, move down to Melbourne. So it is a pretty quick turnaround. And, you know, the club were terrific in, in terms of, you know, um, helping you as much as possible. Um, getting a bed sorted, a TV. Um, you move in with a host family, but for the first two weeks, you live with a player. So I lived with Josh Dunkley, who is, uh, he's an absolute professional, you know, a terrific cook, which helps. Um, but it is, a, it is a really wild turnaround in terms of how quickly you've, you've got to get moving. Um, but as I said, the club were terrific. We had Brent Prismal, Brent Prismal, um, as a player welfare, and uh, he's still there. He's one of the best people you'll meet um, in terms of, you know, making you feel comfortable and doing every everything you can to make sure you get yourself sorted. Clubs, AFL clubs nowadays, they just like you were saying then with the welfare, mate. Uh, they they've got so many great uh, professionals, you know, that, that are involved. And, and like you're saying, uh, players are physical, but also their uh, mental well-being is uh, really really important as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think. Um, you know, the scope for that to, to from where it, where it was probably 10 years ago to where it is now has grown so much, um, you know, because, you know, so many players are coming forward and saying, look, you know, it is, it is a real struggle. Um, and we, you know, it is, it is a boyhood dream to play AFL. And, um, you know, you're always thankful that you get that opportunity. But at the same time, there are so many other challenges that come with it that you just don't expect to have until you get into the game. Um, and I think the exciting thing is, is that players, there is that... Um, that confidence now where they can come out and say, look, I'm struggling a bit. And, you know, the AFL are putting in these really great resources to make sure they can do whatever they can to help those players. And um, as you said, there, there is a great, um, there's a great people in the game in those roles. Um, but I think, you know, we still have a long way to go where, before we can get to a place where it's, you know, it's at the place it needs to be. We've done so much great work over the last few years to, to improve that. And, and hopefully that only improves. That's right, mate. There is, there is always, you know, always improvement for things in life. And, and like you're saying, I'm sure later on down the track, there'll be lots of new things and the AFL will have ease, even better resources than what, they're, what they've currently got now set up. Yeah, so going back to uh, before, Ferg, you said obviously you live with Josh, Josh Dunkley for a, a while. Uh, how was that experience for you, mate? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was interesting. You never. It was like when you stay at a friend's house for the first time, and and you're sort of never really comfortable. Yeah, you, you ask really politely for everything. You know, you don't know where the glasses of water are. You got no idea. Uh, but I was pretty lucky because Timmy English uh, was there as well, so we were sharing a bedroom. Um, so it sort of was good to sort of experience that with with someone else. And me and Timmy are, are still really close now probably because of that experience. Um, you know, he was probably in a worse spot than me. He was a young 19 year old who just moved over from WA. So you can only think about the move he's had to make rather than me who moved two hours down the road. Um, so it was really nice. We got to have that experience. Um, Josh uh, was living with his, his sister at that stage and she was also you know, a pretty handy cook. So we had great food. We were coming home to every night and, the bed was the best thing I've ever slept on, so um, we got we got treated really well at, at Dunks' house. I think we got um, yeah we got the best deal there. Um, so look, it was a really good experience, and and as I said, he's a really 
you know, big professional in terms of his recovery and everything he does, you know, around his footy um, outside of the club. So it was a really good experience to see someone like that and, and the work that they do because um, it just sets you up, you know, for what, you know, okay, this is the level I have to get to if I want to be, you know, successful here. Fantastic, mate. It seems like uh, you were treated very well, like you were just, <laughs> like we're just saying, Dan. Yeah, so obviously you played a few games for the Dogs. Uh, you you played down uh, forward. Uh, what was the experience like for you? And can you tell us a bit about playing down uh, forward, mate? Yeah, so it's, uh, I think if you ask any of the dog fans, at least the ones that comment on the face on, on Facebook, um, you know, the full line is one of our big weapons. Um, but, you know, it, and it was tough. You know, we have such a, a fast back line that we play through that, um, you know, being a forward, you have to be someone who can be on mobile and on their toes at all times just because the ball can come in any which way, any direction. Uh, we like to play a fast game. So, you know, you have to be able to adjust really quickly. So, it's a tough spot to play. Um, and I think you talk to anyone in footy that uh, the forward line is, is one of the hardest positions because, you know, you rely on everything happening up the field. Um, you know, if you're a backman, you know, your job is, you know, oh, I can be used defensively, but also I know the ball's going to be coming in defensively. Um, if you're a midfielder, it's your job to win it. Whereas as a forward, everything's dictated by what's happening up the field. So um, it, it was it was challenging. Uh, but for me, you know, I really enjoyed that Um certain aspects of my game really developed, you know, when I was at the dogs and, and my strength became, you know, stronger and my weaknesses had to improve because, you know, to meet the level. Um, but yeah, look, a real challenge, but at the same time, it was a challenge I enjoyed sort of having week in, week out. It definitely would have been a great experience for me, obviously, playing up forward. Who was the toughest uh, opponent, mate, for you to play on, do you reckon? Oh, who? Yeah, I had um. So I only played, as you said, I only played a handful of AFL games. I got um, I got Alex Rance for a quarter one week. Uh, so that was uh, that was when he was at the peak of his powers. And um, with the Richmond style, you don't really get anyone playing on you. Like, and you know, as as you'd see on, on when he was playing, he'd drift off. And you know, if he ever became relevant in the play, he'd work his way up the field and, and start picking him off. So the hardest thing about playing on him was was keeping him engaged enough that he couldn't leave you as much as he wanted to. Um, but uh, when I'm in game five and he was in game probably two, 250 or so and in all Australian form, it was always going to be a tough one. Uh, but he was definitely the toughest, you know, so strong, could cover the ground and, and read the play really well. Um, but look, I played on, I was, I was lucky enough to play on some really good defenders and, and learn so much, you know, I played five games at AFL and the amount I've took it, taken out of that, and just used it in my footy going forward has been massive. But, uh, yeah, I'd probably – he'd have to be number one, I'd say. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, yeah, Matt, he definitely would have been tough to play on. Like you're saying, uh, as, as we all know, Rance was such such a uh, terrific player, but he was also uh, very smart too. He could read the ball as well. So that, yeah. would, that would have been a challenge for our uh, forward line players like yourself. Yeah, definitely, mate. He – um. He reads it and he almost plays, he plays his own game, you know. He has a forward, you can feel a bit disrespected because he was just dripped up the field. And, you know, when, you, when you're a player of his calibre, you know, you can do things like that. And uh, he impacted games as well as any backman has over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, um, maybe other than Matty Scarlett. So, you know, he was, it was really hard not to sort of sit back and go, well, where the hell's he going? And then he'd have the footy the next second. And you go, oh, well, he obviously knows what he's doing. So uh, there was a bit to it. But, um, you know, they took the chocolates that day. So, obviously, I needed to do a bit more. But, um, yeah, look, it was a really great experience to be able to take him on for even just a brief amount of time. Yeah, it definitely would have been a great experience, Ferg. Like you were saying, you would have learned so much from obviously having, having uh, Alex Rance play on you. So, when you were at the uh, Bulldogs, mate, what was it like training with guys like Josh Dunkley, uh, Marcus botton Pally, Caleb Daniels. I'll just name a few. There's so many other great young talent at the Dogs. But uh, was it like, what was it like for you playing with all them great players? Yeah, I suppose, you know, when you do get to the club, um, and I was a pretty unique circumstance where we got to the club in our year, we just won the flag. 
So you get there and, you know, that's a premiership team that you, you're training with. Um, so it's really hard in your first year to not sort of go, oh, I'm in a bit, I'm, I'm in awe of these blokes a bit, just because of, um, you know, the players they were and the success they just had. Um, so that was a real big adjustment, you know, that I had to make from, you know, going, oh, geez, I really look up to these guys to, oh, I have to sort of, you know, adjust to, to being, you know, on the same team as them. Um, because, you know, until you sort of see them as teammates, you know, it's not really going to work. And I think we were really lucky in terms of our locker room that we had such a, you know, a, a great vibe and a relaxed sort of, um, a relaxed attitude that, you know, you could fit in really easily. And um, the friendships that I've made of my time there have been, you know, really strong and, and still really strong to this day because, you know, that was the sort of group that we were where, you know, you just want to be inclusive of anyone there. So that was the biggest thing about, you know, making that adjustment and, and seeing Bont as a, as a teammate and a mate rather than, oh, that's the Bont. Um, yeah, and the quicker right. you could do that, you know, the quicker you could be, you know, a, a better player for it. But it was, uh, it was very challenging early on. It uh, definitely would have been uh, challenging for you, like, real early in, into, obviously, you've been at the dogs, lot, like you said, Ferg, you were drafted. You probably really had no idea of, any other players or staff, like obviously at a personal level when you first arrived to the club? Yeah, definitely. And you sort of like, you obviously, you'd know a handful of players from every club, um, but you know, you wouldn't know, you know, the, the 35th player. And so that was the thing, you know, you had to, you'd learn, you know, 70 names in a day. And, uh, you know, that was, it was a lot to take on. Um, but at the same time, once you did get that comfort of um, of knowing everyone, you'd learnt that you know, there was a different person, you know, employed for every different thing, and and they were always terrific at, at the role they did, and, and you knew that you had so much support around you. Um, so you know, once once you sort of got the hang of it and you felt comfortable at the club, it was just the best place to be. It definitely sure would have been for you. Obviously, back when you were playing at the Dogs or AFL. Um, did you have a favourite football highlight? And can you tell us why that would have been your favourite uh, highlight? Yeah, I'd probably, probably say this, but I've got two. Um, so first win, uh, AFL level, um, is something that you hold on to. Um, so it was against St Kilda at, um, at Eddie Had Obviously, the first game is pretty exciting, but... My first game was at Ballarat in three degree weather, um, pouring rain, absolutely freezing, and we got rolled by about thirty points. So, I mean, it was pretty exciting that one. But I'd, yeah, the first win was always something that will that will hold with me. That feeling that that I managed that I had, you know, after the, when the siren went, um, is something that you know I, you know, you try and replicate, but you know, it's something that you just even can't imagine, sort of how you feel at the time, um, and then. Um, walking out onto the MCG round 23 against Richmond in front of 70,000 was was another one. Just um, just seeing all those people, all the yellow and black. I don't know how many Bulldogs fans were there. It would have been maybe a thousand, but you just see just this Tiger army, and uh, it's really hard to not get caught up in it. Um, you can only imagine what it'd be like to play in a final or on Grand Final day there when there's a hundred thousand. But yeah, to walk out and see that was. Um, yeah, something that yeah, I could never imagine doing. It definitely would have been a great, a great moment for you. Like we're saying, just just then, Ferg, with the first win, mate. Obviously, you would definitely uh, cherish that forever. But you, you would definitely be proud. Obviously, being a part of the the team and the club. Obviously, that would have been a very special moment for you. Obviously, winning your first AFL game ever. Yeah, and you know, it was uh it didn't look like it was gonna go that way, especially early on. Um, you know, we were down by oh, thirty points a quarter time. St Kilda had all the run. Um and then well, I think we kicked nine goals to none in the third, um, and really got our momentum going and you know, we didn't look like we didn't look like losing in that in that second half. And so I think I came off um with about two minutes left in the game and I just got to sit back and actually, you know, look around the stadium and, and really enjoy it and you know, I, I have memories from that day that I'll hold on to forever. Um, but yeah, that was uh, you know, getting a Gatorade chair after a game is just uh, yeah, that was that was something else, mate. I just um, that day really will stick with me for the rest of my life. And you know, that's um, 
I'll be always grateful for my career with dogs and, and the opportunity they gave me. But and that is but that is the yeah the moment I'll I'll always remember and look back on really fondly. What a fantastic uh, moment for you to hold on to, man. Um, another question um, I would like to ask you, uh, Ferg. Obviously, back when you were playing uh, AFL, what other interests did you have outside of football? And could you just quickly tell us maybe a couple? Yeah, I think um, so. Like obviously, you know, I'm a sports person. I enjoy sort of all sports. Um, you know, I'm only um, footy. Footy is probably my main one. I'm only half talented at that one. And then, you know, basketball. I was a really keen basketball growing up, and still follow that really closely. Um, you know, I've gotten right into my NFL since I moved to Melbourne. I've got a big Chicago Bears fan. I think I've got a delivery coming today for a Chicago Bears jumper that I've been waiting for for about two months, mate. So. Bloody keen to open that one up. Um, also got into golf a lot. That was a big one, um, especially up in the hub. Um, you know, every every bloke plays golf, it turns out, when you get up there. So it was really good. And, you know, um, uh, if you ask a few of the boys, I'm one of the worst golfers I've ever seen. But um, you shoot me a text, I'll always be ready. So I think that was a lot of, the good thing about playing me was I was always up to play. It, it just, uh, you knew it was going to take a, a couple more hours than a normal round would because I'd just be spending half the time looking for my ball. But... Yeah, look, that were probably my main ones. Just, um, you know, filling in time, finding other sports. Um, the biggest thing is, you know, when you're in season is you do have to find ways to fill in time without, you know, um, wasting yourself or, you know, wasting energy or wasting fatigue. So the best thing to do was, you know, sitting on the couch, you know, watching, uh, watching a, you know, a game of basketball or, you know, a bit of golf. So that was one that um, definitely, you know, piqued my interest but um you know you had to keep the education up so i had to do you know i was doing i'm still doing some study um mum wouldn't let me get off that easy with uh just doing just watching sport all day so you know it was uh you have to find that right mix where you know you're getting the brain ticking over but also um yeah keeping busy and just watching a bit of sport you've got you've definitely got yourself some great hobbies there yeah so you also <laughs> you're just saying then mate you also uh with some studies for obviously the the AFL and that I'm sure they have some programs set up. Would would that be tough for players? Obviously, you know, but balancing all their work, all their work, and then doing like uh like studying outside of uh football. Yeah, I think you know there is there is definitely challenges there. Um, that that um, but at the same time, uh, the AFL and the AFLPA have put in some great um you know, practices to make sure the players can still, you know, do things outside of football. Um, and, you know, it does come back to the club about, you know, pushing that side of things. We were really big when I was at the Dogs about, you know, pushing players to do things outside of football. Um, and in the pre-season, it's, it's a bit more challenging because it is a bit more full on then. But, um, you know, when you do get into season, a lot of the time you spend at the club is about recovery. Um, and, you know, you get a, little, a lot of time off at home because, you know, sleep is the best way to recover and, and just putting your feet up. So, the club is really good at making time for players to do that study. And, um, you know, you, you're obviously not going to do, you know, a four-year course in four years. It might take you, you know, anywhere up to eight years to do that because you're only doing it part-time. But, um, you know, I was, you know, really lucky. That I was, you know, I've, I've been doing a business diploma um, over the last year or so. Um, and just being able to knock that over bit by bit. Um, and the club really is supportive of that and, and making sure, you know, you continue to do that just so... You know, when you do get to my situation where you do leave the game, um, you have, you know, something that you're either doing or you can fall back on. Um, and I've been lucky enough to be in a position where, you know, I sort of feel comfortable with where I am um, rather than really stressed. It is it is great that they uh, do that for to uh, support you as players. It's fantastic that the clubs and the AFL do that. I'll ask you a, a couple more questions quickly before uh, we wrap uh, this podcast up with you. Um, who did you uh, idolise growing up as a young kid? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think it probably you know varied from my age. Um, I think once I started to really get invested in footy and, and know the type of player I wanted to be, I really took note of Nick Revolt. Um, you know, an amazing runner. Um, could take, you know, one of the best contested marks in the game. Um, 
and just an all-round great player. Um, he was definitely someone, you know, when I started to sort of get, you know, to 15, 16, 17, that I really took note of. Um, and just, yeah, it was just, a, it was an easy option when you have a player that that good. I was, you know, I do enjoy watching, you know, your Judds and your Ablets and things like that. But, you know, I, I just wasn't a midfielder. So, um, you know, Revolt, Jonathan Brown, uh, which is really funny because he's a big, strong key forward and I'm a stringy hybrid sort of uh, hold out wide. So, you know, I've watched these blokes who are, you know, these big, strong guys and I'll this lanky, lanky, stringy sort of bloke. So, but yeah, look, that was probably the main ones I watched growing up, just those, those key forwards who uh, could just turn a game. Yeah, no, they definitely could do that, mate. Like I said, they were uh, champions of the of the uh, great game of football back when back when uh, they were playing. They definitely were. Absolutely, mate. Nah, uh, you know, it's sometimes you know you, you do like to go back and look at highlights. And um, actually had dinner with a with a bloke who played with Jonathan Brown. Um, and he was able uh, to talk about a few exchanging a few stories last night and. He was just telling us about how um, how it was playing with him and just how almost dumb he was because he was so courageous and he just run back into packs and and just break them open and and uh, you know you sort of do you do remember watching it watching those things as kids and, and just going how good is this guy so yeah it is it is pretty cool to to sort of um you know to think back about those times when you were a bit younger just watching footy. That's terrific. It definitely would have been really cool. I'll ask you. Uh, this one will be the last question for you, Ferg. Obviously, no, I don't. Obviously, unfortunately, you were delisted, mate. Um, you hope you haven't given up on your AFL dreams, where you could potentially be picked up in another draft or maybe the mid-season draft next season. Yeah, so I've signed with Box Hill, uh, so Hawthorne's affiliate, um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm sort of. Uh, it's been weird, you know, when you play in the AFL system, footy is your job. And uh, it's sort of, you know, the joy of being able to play can get lost in you a little bit. Um, and, you know, when you get back into the workforce and, and then have to travel and get to footy training, you, you realise how much you love the game again. Um, so, you know, I've, I've only been there for three or four weeks and, you know, I've had so much fun over that time. And so I'm really am keen to sort of just get back into footy and, and enjoying it. And, Hopefully, you know, my AFL dream isn't over, isn't over and, um, you know, a door opens up just to get back into the system. Um, but for the time being, you know, just playing the highest level I possibly can is something that excites me and that's a VFL footy at this stage. And, uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm really keen to get to get back in the season. I haven't played an actual game in over a year, like, you know, many people around Australia because of COVID. Um, so, yeah, keen as must have made to get started. Sammy Mitchell just signed there as a coach. Um, and, you know, he's, uh, he's one of the greatest to ever do it. So, you know, really keen to learn as much as I can from him. And hopefully something's co something comes off it, mate. Oh, fantastic, mate. I am really glad to hear that you signed with the uh, Box Hill VFL. All the best with, obviously, at VFL level. But I really hope there is another uh, AFL opportunity. And, and like we are saying before, hopefully that is not the end of your AFL dream. Hopefully you can can get picked up somehow. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, you know, the support I've received from, um, you know, family, friends and, and you know, just, um, you know, a few of the messages you get, you know, on, on social media just mean a lot to you. Um, you know, I'm sure people that send them think, oh, this bloke's probably never going to see this. But um, I, I, I did, I appreciate all of them. It means a lot to you when you get those things and, and the, you hear the support that you get and, so, you know, fingers crossed, mate. We'll see what happens. But um, if not, you know, I can walk out of that game knowing, you know, I gave them everything. And, uh, you know, I managed to get five games in, you know, and just walking out, you know, getting that first game, you know, you, you, you live out the boyhood dream. And it's something I'll hold on to and, and know that um, I'll be grateful for ever for having that opportunity. That's right, mate. Obviously, definitely be, be proud of what you've done. Ferg and achieved at the Bulldogs, but as you said, just look forward to your next opportunity in life, but also in football as well. So a massive thanks for coming on on uh, the podcast, mate. Thanks for talking about your footy journey. It's been great to have you on the podcast. Really appreciate your time. Oh, thanks, Jed. It's been great, mate. I've really enjoyed this. Um, 
rap, we managed to get it done. Um, as I said, mate, it took a couple of weeks to get sorted, but uh, stoked to have been on board, mate. And thanks for having me. No, nah, no worries at all. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We'll be back after Christmas, so enjoy your Christmas break. And again, Merry Christmas to you all, and bye for now.